Hello guys, bersama saya lagi dalam Alright Nopo Channel. Ya betul, Datu Sri Rafizi Ramli adalah memang raja formula. Dan kerana formula-formula yang dibuat oleh YB Datu Sri Rafizi Ramli membuatkan ekonomi kita semakin berkembang sahabat-sahabat semua. Eh, pertumbuhan ekonomi KDNK kita semakin baik dan semakin memulih. Namun hanya pembangkang sahaja yang mem, 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 apa ini, memekakkan telinga mereka, membutahkan mata mereka untuk melihat kepada data-data. Mereka tidak percaya data kerana apa yang mereka percaya adalah fitnah dan juga persepsi. Dan kerana itu saya ingin membawakan anda sahabat semua satu interview dari uh, temu bual ya. Uh, Datu Seri Rafizi Ramli dengan Bloomberg TV sempena pelancaran Silicon Vision. Ah, serta mengupas latar belakang serta strategik di sebalik kerjasama kerajaan Malaysia dengan Am Holding. Am ah, Holding ini antara mereka bentuk seni bina chip terbesar di dunia. Di dunia. Ya, jadi tanpa membuang masa, ayo kita bersama-sama untuk menonton video ini. Dan kita nak tunggu formula daripada Raja Formula, insya Allah. Mengapa syarikat perikat bentuk seni bina chip terbesar dunia memilih Malaysia? You may not know this, but Malaysia is actually the sixth biggest exporter of chips. But at the tail end of it, it wants to climb up that value chain, and perhaps this deal is what they're looking for. Joining us now is Rafizi Ramli, Malaysia's economy minister. This is, of course, an exclusive interview. That deal set to take place later today. Minister, good to have you with us. Talk to us about the significance of this deal with Arm. How does it affect your chip ecosystem? system we have always wanted to move from the back end um, which is on uh, testing and assembly to the front end where in terms of the value the back end only captures about 10 to 15 percent of the value of the supply chain whereas 60 percent is more or less at the front end uh, but it's a lot more difficult because obviously it involves IPs And if we were to wait for our own expertise to develop organically, most probably it's going to take much longer. So the government has taken um, a radical approach where we work with ARM, uh, which is a market leader in IP architecture, uh, with the perspective of building the whole ecosystem, and that will be able to complement our strength in back end and then we'll accelerate our move towards the front end. Just putting it out there, this is the first time Arm is actually signing a deal with a government. All the, the other times they were signing a deal with companies. Yes, that's, that's as far as we are concerned. Uh, this is the first time that Arm is, is uh, uh, signing an agreement uh, with the government uh, with a total view of building an overall ecosystem with the country. IPs, access to IPs yeah. is not free. How mm. much are you paying for that? Uh, how many IPs are we looking at? Um, we have different layers uh, of access. Uh, predominantly, it's made up of uh, three different layers. Um, at the bottom of it is, is what we call ARM flexible um, access. Um, this is where you know, we allow startups and IC design companies access to a library of IPs. And uh, this should bring down the cost of R&D and entry into IC design significantly. And with a view of using this to also build the pipeline of engineers. The next level is compute subsystem. This is more or less uh, designed um, chips that are almost ready to be used. It just requires some further design. So, Minister, how many IPs and how much are you paying uh, for them? Um, it's... <laughs> It's a, it's, a, it's a $250 million uh, for a 10-year program, um, and, and we think it's going to be consumed much faster than 10 years. And if it works well, and if we are able to get the final result that we want, then there's always uh, consideration whether we want to scale this up further. Um, so you're looking at 25 AFA, um, 7 uh, compute subsystem, and a further uh, 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 access further down the line that we will announce in due time.
quantify the mm. impact on the economy. We're mm. talking about a $250 million investment. Mm -hmm. Will that translate to perhaps an additional 1% growth to GDP? Yeah, um, it's, it's the, the rule of thumb is uh, one compute subsystem uh, based on uh, the market now, um, if it tapes out, um, we'll be able to create um, and uh, a cheap company with a revenue of about 1.5 to 2 billion um, uh, dollar per annum, just one company per one company subsidy. Hopefully, we'll be able to create between seven to ten companies, and that alone will be able to create at least 15, 20 billion dollar revenue per annum. Not to mention the subsequent spillover effect to the overall ecosystem. So it's it's certainly something very um, significant for the. So one percent to GDP, two percent uh, of GDP. <laughs> um, I, I I think it's fair to say that it will be able to 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 to, to go with um, beyond one percent. How uh, quickly do you think Malaysia can produce its own chip? We are trying to do it maybe between five to seven years because uh, uh, with the collaboration with ARM, um, it shortens the time uh, for R&D into going to the market. So I think five to seven years is something that is uh, doable, especially when we are also trying to focus on building um, data um, I mean, server racks for data right. centers because there's already demand for it in Malaysia. Reports have suggested that mm. ARM itself is interested in producing its own chip. Of mm. course, right now it's just licensing mm. IPs. Mm -hmm. Would Malaysia be part of that? Would so, you uh, be interested in being part of that? Uh, we'll be more than happy. And uh, obviously, uh, there's some kind of you know special relationship that um, uh, builds this collaboration. I don't know what is ARM's plan, but you know, I hope that uh, we will be able to build this collaboration. Let's talk about what you know. We yeah. know that uh, GDP is poised mm. to grow four and a half, five and a half percent. Yeah. Given the uncertain environment, is that still achievable? Would you have to perhaps review that growth target? Um, not at the moment. I think uh, we have a pipeline of investments and I think the fundamental is still strong. Um, of course, everyone in the world now is reviewing how things are developing, but not at the moment. I think uh, projection is that it's going to be between 4.5 to 5.5. All right, such confidence. Minister, thank you yeah. for joining us. Rafizi Ramli. Terbaik, sahabat-sahabat semua. Jadi ini antara apa yang sedang di uh, negara kita mengarah kepada ataupun melonjakkan industri semi semikonduktor negara ya beralih daripada hanya menguasai bahagian back end kepada membina keupayaan dalam front end seterusnya menambah nilai dalam rantaian global jadi kita berdoa kita menyokong bersama-sama ya supaya program ini projek ini dapat dilaksanakan dengan jayanya dan akan memberi manfaat kepada uh, negara kita. Sekali lagi, tahniah kita ucapkan kepada Datuk Seri Rafiz Ramli, Raja Formula uh, yang selalu membuatkan ataupun pembangkang-pembangkang ini cemburu dengan kejayaan demi kejayaan yang uh, dilaksanakan, dilakukan oleh Datuk Seri Rafiz Ramli terbaik. Jadi sahabat semua, apa pandangan anda? Anda boleh berikan komen di dalam ruangan komen. Jadi terima kasih. Sampai di sini saja. Izinkan saya untuk mengundurkan diri. Dan seperti biasa, peribahasa mengatakan. Tak apa pun kangkap, dua ton keinginan. Dalam bahasa Melayunya, tebuk dada, tanya selera. Sekian jadi daripada Orang Nupa Channel. Saya kita berjumpa lagi. Bye-bye.